Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Reference Roundtable. So we've been doing this for quite a while now, well over a year. Uh, but if you're new here, we're librarians at the Sioux City Public Library, and we meet up once a week on Thursdays to talk about books, movies, whatever. Um, I'm Lacey, and today I uh, have Sarah with me. Uh, please join in our join in on our conversation by commenting below. We love hearing your thoughts on what we're going to chat about today, or even if you just want to share with us what book you've been reading. Um, so today, we picked a topic that is very near and dear to both of our hearts. Uh, so June is National Adopt a Cat Month, and so we're going to talk about cats, <laughs> and it's going to be wonderful. Uh, we're going to talk about some books that uh, star cats, some that feature poems about cats, uh, maybe even one that's written by a cat. Um, so, of course, it only feels right that during Cat Adoption Month, we also share a little bit about the fluffy little adopted kitties in our lives, um, because we both have cats that we've adopted from the Siouxland Humane Society. So we're going to kick things off today by telling you about our kitties. <laughs> yes, and we're going to start with a slideshow so that everybody can see the preciousness <laughs> of our kitties. So... <laughs> I am going to share my screen and we'll do that first. All right, so here we go. Patty is my kitty, obviously. <laughs> She's the cutest. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm a little biased, but I... I, I love her spots. I'm a fan <laughs> of spots. It's very cute. <laughs> and she has about 30 collars. <laughs> and so, of course, Frankie is is my kitty. <laughs> he loves being dressed up, as you can see. Oh. Not really. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite. <laughs> and, you know, when it's a bit sunny, it's a little much for him. <laughs> Too all right cute. <laughs> we could do that all day yeah. we really narrowed it down for about 300 pictures for you all so <laughs> yes yes so patty is my kitty she's a calico obviously and i this this episode fell right in line with her adoptiversary which is tomorrow we will have ha patty for five years so we had to do this episode because it was perfect. <laughs> Just perfect. Perfect. <laughs> um, it felt so right. Yeah. So she's the best. I don't know what else to say. She's a, she's a brat sometimes. She definitely has a huge personality, but I love her. <laughs> she's my child. <laughs> I feel you there. Yeah, uh, Frankie, his adoptiversary is not anytime soon. It's in January, so no fun <laughs> tie-in there. But I've had him for about three and a half years, and he's uh, six, I think, now. Just had an estimate of what I, you know, how old he was when I got him. So I think he's about six. Um, yeah, he is, he's a cat dog is what I describe him <laughs> as. Uh, he comes when he's called. He follows me around the house constantly. He always wants my attention. So he is, he is cat dog. It's <laughs> the best way to describe him. He loves love. <laughs> yep, he's All a friendly right. boy. Patty, not so much, but that's okay. She, she's she makes you work Patty. for it. She <laughs> yes. makes you work for it. <laughs> for sure. All right. Well, we could talk about our cats for a long time and mm -hmm. show you some videos, you know, all kinds of things. But, you know, you're here to probably hear about some books. So we'll, we'll share some book ideas with you, too. <laughs> yes. On to the books. So I tried to choose an array of different kinds of books. So the first book I chose is a romantic comedy, and it's called Get a Life, Chloe Brown by Talia Hibbert. So Although this book is more of a romance, it does feature a cat. Um, so Chloe Brown is, you know, in all sense of the word, a nerd. She's she's an IT expert, and she's actually um, 
we're introduced to her at a point in her life when she's suffered a debilitating bout of pneumonia that has caused a lot of other problems in her life. So she has a lot of health issues. Um, and she, you know, she's letting this take over her life. And at a certain point, she decides that she needs to get a life. So she comes up with this list of things that she thinks that she should do to get a life, to get back out there and make friends and, um, you know, do different things that she hasn't done in a while. So she moves to, this takes place in England and she moves to a new flat and she, um, there's this handyman that kind of lurks around and they kind of try to avoid each other at all costs. And one day Chloe sees a kitty up in a tree and knowing that she can't let this cat just stay up there, she climbs the tree to try to get him down and get stuck in the tree herself and enter the handyman whose name is Red, who has to help her get out of the tree and from that blossoms their romance and and also the kitty stays. <laughs> she decides that as long as no one else owns him, she named him Smudge because when she was looking up at the sky, he looked like a little smudge in the sky from the tree. So um, I just love a, a good book with a kitty in it that that isn't sad <laughs> because I can't read sad ones. So. Yeah, she, she kind of owes her romance to the kitty. Yes. Much, yep. So yep. I like that. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Adam had a comment here for us. <laughs> Wasn't the internet invented for cat pictures and videos? It's part of their plan to take over the world as soon as they grow thumbs. I would have to agree. <laughs> I, I, I pretty much use the internet aside from work solely for for cat videos and pictures so yep. i agree <laughs> <laughs> i agree hmm. all right well i'm i'm going pretty classic with my choices today my cat choices um the first book i'm going to talk about is old possum's book of practical cats by t.s Eliot. so if you know anything about this book at all you probably know it as the title that inspired the hugely popular Andrew Lloyd Webber play Cats. Uh, it was published in 1939, and I thought this was very cool. Um, many of these poems were originally written in letters that T.S. Eliot sent his godchildren. So he didn't even necessarily write them like, you know, with, you know, anyone um, with an audience in mind other than his, his godchildren. So I thought that was really cool. That is cool. Um, I'm going to admit something here that might maybe be unpopular with some people, but I don't like musicals. I've never, ever seen Cats in its entirety. And the parts I did see, I was like, no, no, thanks. It's fine <laughs> if you love musicals. I think that I'm sure they're wonderful. They're just not for me. Um, but regardless of how I feel about the musical, his poems are excellent. Um, he just has an awesome sense of rhythm and rhyme. Um, just reading these these poems out loud is just kind of fun. Uh, I know a lot of people like to read them to their children for that reason, because they're just kind of goofy and entertaining. Um, I'm just gonna read a really quick little excerpt uh, from the first poem called The Naming of Cats. It's basically all about cats um, and that they need to have three different names. Um, so this is kind of right in the middle of it. But I tell you, a cat needs a name that's particular, a name that's peculiar and more dignified. Else how can he keep up his tail perpendicular or spread out his whiskers or cherish his pride? And that's just to give you a little taste. They're, they're a lot of fun. Uh, and I just think it's kind of an interesting um, kind of... Uh, I don't know the right word I'm looking for, but it's, it's kind of opposite. I grew up reading T.S. Eliot uh, in high school, but we read like The Wasteland and The Love Song of J. Alfred Prufrock. And they are, they are nothing like this. They're kind of, you're, you know, depressing and <laughs> <laughs> down sort of um, poems. So this is totally opposite of that. So if you've only read T.S. Eliot in high school, you should probably check <laughs> oh. Okay, we've got a comment from Claire. She says, I love musicals, but Cats is just its <laughs> own realm of insanity. I would have to agree. I, I love musicals, too. And but I, you know, I think I tried watching Cats, you know, like a video or something. And it's like, no, yeah. this is not the kind of cats I like. <laughs> For me, it was like the human cat thing. It was like mm -hmm. it was a lot like that was just I was like, this has crossed a line. <laughs> uh huh. 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think your mom has a comment too, Lacey. <laughs> I don't, I don't know. I mean, I'd say maybe I was switched at the hospital, but we looked an awful <laughs> lot alike. So that might be kind of hard to, hard to <laughs> like no musicals, Lacey, come on. <laughs> Uh, I like uh, I like Kinky Boots. I like Kinky go. Boots. There so I, there's one musical that I like. <laughs> I, I like too many to name, but <laughs> I do agree that Cats is weird, though. So. <laughs> Good. Good, I'm not alone. <laughs> yes. Okay, so switching gears completely, I am going to talk about Woman in the Window by A.J. Finn. So if any of you are familiar with this book, it is a thriller. It's about an agoraphobic, agoraphobic woman who, um, you know, we're introduced to her and she she can't leave her house. She's afraid to leave her house. You obviously know something weird's going on. She um, is trying to get help, but um, she starts focusing in on some neighbors that are acting strange. And she believes that she's a witness to something brutal that happens. And... She's all, yeah, she's nuts too. She's got all this, she's got a drinking problem and a pill problem. And so when she sees this thing, you're kind of like, is this really going on? Is she imagining it? And I think even, you know, she's wondering that as well. So I really did, I like this book. And I, I chose this one because there is a kitty that she has and his name is Punch. And um, yeah, he's not a huge character in the book, but... The reason I chose this is because Netflix just came out with the movie version of this book and it was not very good. <laughs> it was terrible. Um, I, I really did like the book and this is one of those where the book was a lot better. But even if, if like my husband had never read the book and we watched this together and he was like, what did we just watch? But the best part of it is the cat. Because the cat is um, one of those like flat faced ones, like the the Persians or the Himalayans, and mm -hmm. it's it's just adorable and cute. And uh, I did when I saw the cat, I had to like Google and make sure he didn't get killed or hurt because I can't handle that, <laughs> and he doesn't. But um, so yeah, so if you're thinking about Woman in the Window, read the book and skip the Netflix movie. <laughs> Because it is a, it, it is an interesting book, and it's kind of a, a modern take on the the Rear Window. Is that Alfred Hitchcock? Yep, that movie. Yeah. So, and it's kind of um, if you've seen the movie Disturbia, it's kind of along those lines too. I think that was a modern take on it as well. So, I I haven't read that book, but I I love Rear Window, so I'm like, hmm, I'm gonna have to give that a shot when it's I need a, good a book. thriller. Don't watch the movie though. <laughs> no, no, after you recommend or you're not unless, recommending yeah, the Unless you want to see the kitty. The kitty is is kind of worth it. <laughs> Look at the cat and then move on. Yes. <laughs> yep. <laughs> All right. Uh my second uh book is a series, actually. Uh it's Mrs. Murphy's Mysteries by Rita May Brown and Sneaky Pie Brown. So Sneaky Pie is, is not Rita Mae's child or, or husband or spouse. Um, Sneaky Pie is Rita Mae's tiger cat. Um, so I just love that she included her cat as the co-author. Um, <laughs> uh, Rita Mae Brown's actually a really well-known author. She wrote uh, a coming of age novel. Um, I want to say it came out in the late 60s or early 70s called Ruby Fruit Jungle. That's really considered a classic. Um, but if you're kind of been a reader in the last 20, 30 years, you definitely know her for this um, Mrs. Murphy's Mysteries. Um, it's New York best selling. I mean, it's if, if you work at the library, you've definitely pulled this book off the shelf for somebody before um, a book from this series. So it's got the main characters are uh, Mary Minor Harristine. She's the, she's the human. Um, and she goes by Harry um, is kind of what her friends know her as. And she has two pets. She's got Mrs. Murphy. So that's the cat and Tucker, who is a Corgi dog. Um, so to kind of give you an example of what goes on in these these mystery books, um, the first book is called Wish You Were Here, and citizens in uh, Harry's town are turning up murdered. And Mrs. Murphy and Tucker, her pets, decide they need to protect their owner. She needs their help. 
So <laughs> they start investigating. And of course, Harry is curious what's going on too. So she starts her own investigation, not realizing that her pets are actually way ahead of her. Um, so Mrs. Murphy uh, needs to figure out how to warn Harry to try and stop, you know, murders from happening. And so, of course, it's it's not a serious, I mean, it's, it's serious in that murders happen, but it's not like super gory. It's not, um, you know, it's it's a cozy mystery. Yeah, definitely. It's, cozy. it's fun. <laughs> um, so I I like them because um, it, they're not super intense. Uh, they read pretty quickly. It's a very good summer read. Um, you know, if you're sitting on a beach in Hawaii or at a pool, or maybe you're just sitting in the backyard and you're in your you know lounge chair, I definitely <laughs> think it's a good summertime book. <laughs> Nice. There's definitely a lot of cat mysteries and series that are out there. And I am sad to say I've never read any of them, but maybe I should. They sound really cute. <laughs> yeah. yeah I, it's kind of one of those things. There's so many different kind of like varieties and levels of cozy mysteries that like, even if you don't like this one, there's probably something out there for you. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So I'm going to end with... A true story of a cat, which um, if you're in for a good cry or a tearjerker, I, you know, the, this is one of those kind of books. Um, so this is Making Rounds with Oscar, The Extraordinary Gift of an Ordinary Cat by David Dosa. And it's, it's about this cat that lived in a nursing home in Rhode Island. And he... Um, he, they figured out that he had a sense for when patients were going to pass away and he would go, he would visit a lot of patients throughout the day that were at the nursing home. But when he knew someone was going to pass away, he would stay there with them. So, you know, it kind of goes through the different stories of these patients and how they figured out that he, he was doing this and he would comfort them. And it's just one of those stories that's just heartwarming and touching and um, just shows how amazing cats are, which I love. Um, so, you know, there's, I, I looked this up on YouTube too, and there's a few YouTube videos about Oscar and, um, you know, shows, takes a tour through the nursing home and shows him. And it's just a really cool story. I, I really, I really like that when cats that's, do amazing. Yeah. That's so <laughs> sweet. Like, <laughs> I, I kind of want to read it, but I kind of don't because I'm right. just like, that just sounds like a tearjerker. <laughs> yes. Yep, for sure. But, you know, and yeah, it's just so heartwarming, but also just, you know, obviously people are passing away, so not fun. No, you know what you're getting into with a book like that. There's, yes. you're going to have the tissue box. Yes. Um, pretty close. <laughs> <laughs> yes. All right. Well. Thanks for joining in our feline fun this afternoon. Uh, even if you're not a big cat lover, the library has lots of books featuring all kinds of animals. So we, we'll always be happy to track down maybe a cozy mystery with a dog uh, <laughs> crime, <laughs> crime solver or a book on bird watching. We have all of those things. Um, so even if you're not able to watch us live, feel free to still comment below. Even if you're catching us later, we love hearing from you. Uh, if you ever have questions or you just want to reach out to us, we can always be reached at questions at SiouxCityLibrary.org. And hopefully you can join us again next week. I don't know what we're going to be talking about, but it'll be fun. Maybe dogs. Maybe we should do dogs next week. <laughs> I got <laughs> nothing. <it> out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Until then, keep reading, Sioux City. <laughs>